Well, thank you. That was good. We well, think they should do that more often, hadn't they? Ah. Let's open our Bibles to John 11. We uh, use on Sunday nights now, trying to walk through our Gospel of John and some great truths out of that. This is kind of part one of this message, from death to life. The death of of Lazarus. We won't raise him up tonight, but (laughs) but he was raised. But let's stand together as we share some scripture reading here. John eleven one. Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany, the town of Mary and her sister Martha. It was Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair, whose brother Lazarus was sick. Therefore his sister sent unto him, saying, Lord, behold, he whom thou lovest is sick. When Jesus heard that, he said, this sickness is not unto death, but For the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Now Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. When he had heard therefore that he was sick, he abode two days still in the same place where he was. Then after that saith he to his disciples, let us go again, go into Judea again. His disciples say unto him, Master... The Jews of late sought to stone thee, and goest thou thither again? Jesus answered, Are there not twelve hours in the day? If any man walk in the day, he stumbleth not, because he seeth the light of this world. But if a man walk in the night, he stumbleth, because there is no light in him. These things said he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth. But I go that I may awake him out of sleep. Then said his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. Howbeit Jesus spoke of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest in sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead. And I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, Let us go unto him. May God bless his word. You may be seated. From death to life, part one. Have you witnessed a miracle lately? Let's take a trip to the cemetery. Uh, Monte Vista, um, there's Washington County Memorial Gardens. Uh, There are numerous cemeteries in the region. The pallbearers are bringing the casket. The pastor's walking in front and people are gathering. We are gathering around the, uh, the cemetery plot. And about that time, the casket opens. The person rises up. What are you going to do? Fall dead? Maybe. Faint? Run, scream. I don't know what I would do, but that would be an amazing miracle. I can tell you that. Well, we know Jesus raised Lazarus later uh, from the tomb. But if Jesus can do nothing about death, then whatever else he can do amounts to nothing. Jesus can take care of death. If in this life only we have hope in Christ... We are of all men most pitiable. 1 Corinthians 15 and 19. Death is man's last enemy. 1 Corinthians 15, 26. But Jesus has won the victory. Amen? He defeated the greatest enemy of death. 
I'm so glad we have a place to look forward to in Christ because we trusted Jesus Christ. I want to share tonight some purposes for Lazarus' death in this message. Lazarus' death gave Jesus the opportunity to reveal himself as the resurrection and the life. You'll find this in the whole chapter. But we're just going to do part of the chapter. Purpose number one. The death of Lazarus was to glorify God and proclaim Jesus as the Son of God. Lazarus is sick. He lived in the town of Bethany. This is about two miles from Jerusalem. Not far, a little ways. The family has opened their home to Jesus many times. Mary, Martha, and Lazarus. He had the two sisters, and they sent news to Jesus that Lazarus' sickness, he was bad. They knew time was running out. But Jesus says something interesting. Lazarus' death was not for dying. This sickness is for the glory of God and his son Jesus. God bestows honor upon us when our lives are changed unbelief is turned to belief darkness turns to light death come, becomes life he's going to give a wake up call later to dear Lazarus and to all the sisters all the people religious crowd his own disciples they're going to learn a lesson about glorifying God let me ask you a question tonight. What's the most important thing for you as a Christian? Is it to be healthy or holy? To be wealthy or wise? To be full of pride or to be humble? To receive it all or to be willing to lay it all down for the Lord? Jesus said to glorify God is the greatest thing we can do. Have you examined your life in ministry this past week? What have you done to glorify God? Honor the Son. What about the last month? The last year? Five years? Ten years? Thirty years? 40 years, however long you've been a Christian, do you ever examine your life? Are you glorifying God? In raising Lazarus from the dead, both the Father and the Son would be glorified. Remember in John 9, the blind man, why was he blind? Because he sinned? Did his parents sin? No, no. Sent to glorify God. God. Jesus said something in John chapter 5 as he talked about his unity with the Father. Listen to these verses. John 5, 22 and 23. For the Father judgeth no man, but hath committed all judgment unto the Son, that all men should honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. He that honoreth not the Son, honoreth not the Father, which hath sent him. What a beautiful picture of glorifying the Father, and then we glorify the Son. Second purpose tonight for the death of Lazarus. Jesus wants to show his great love, the great love of Jesus. Who did Jesus love in verse 5? Jesus loved Martha and her sister and Lazarus. Aren't you glad Jesus' love is personal? He speaks to the individual, doesn't he? He loves you tonight. He loves me. Aren't you glad? The story with this family is like yours and my family. Each one has needs. Each of you tonight 
has a special need, maybe. Lazarus was sick and dying. The sisters were grieving, brokenhearted, confused. Jesus hasn't come. Now we told him several days ago, where is he? Lazarus' death gave him the opportunity to demonstrate his great love for each one of them. You could be here tonight and say, you know, I don't know if Jesus really cares about me. I wonder if Jesus really loves me. Journey back to John 10 that we did last time. Watch these verses. If you just flip back a chapter, you can follow it in your scripture. John 10 and 3, the sheep hear his voice and he calleth his own sheep by name. And what does he do? He leads them out. He leads them. He calls you by name and he leads you. He calls his sheep. This is a picture of the shepherd and the sheep. Look on down to verse 9. We mentioned that this morning. I am the door. By me, if any man enter in, he shall be saved. He shall go in and out and find what? Pasture. Go find life. I'm going to show you life. Give you life. I've saved you for life. Not death. John 11, verse 11 there in John 10 I am the good shepherd, and the good shepherd giveth his life for the sheep. He sacrificed for you and for me. So, anyone says, I wonder if Jesus loves me? Where do you go? Where church do you go? To the cross. He loved Lazarus, Martha, and Mary. And he loves you. Purpose number three about the death of Lazarus. That we need to wait upon God in great crisis. Now none of you here tonight are impatient. None of you ever like to wait. You don't bother about waiting for anything. Jesus received the news about Lazarus. He did not wait two days so Lazarus would die. He Seems that Lazarus already had died. But know this, because Lazarus had been dead, he was buried four days when Jesus arrived. So the first day, the message got to him. Somebody had to take the message to Jesus. That's one day. Well, the second, third day, Jesus is still ministering, apparently, according to the Scripture. He's there in the area. He says, I'm not going right now. And then the fourth day, he travels to Bethany. He waits to the fourth day. You know, we're people of, of time and schedules. We, we've got to be places, got to be at work at a certain time, uh, got to be at meetings at certain times. It's time for us to remember tonight that our Lord Jesus is not on our time. He is on divine time, God's time. And he's waiting for the Father to get the call to go, and he knew what time it would be. Martha and Mary had to learn to wait on the Lord. He said, to, Pastor, I am facing a severe illness or sickness in my life or in my family. I can't wait. What about the church family? There's a special need there. He can't wait. My friend at work, I've been praying about her. I, there's something wrong. We can't wait. The Lord says, you must wait. Wait upon the Lord. Jesus knows when to act and the right moment. When you have to bear the trials or stand on the side and wait. Maybe to help us to learn the plan of God, to bear the testimony of His power and strength. Whenever the moment arrives, the Lord arises to meet the need of the believer. 
Believers in Christ here tonight, we need to do what Martha and Mary had to do. They had to wait upon the Lord. We find ourselves confronted by different things in life. Disease, disappointments, delays, and even death. Warren Wearsby has a great encouragement for us tonight. He has a two-word formula. Word and wait. Word of God and wait for God. Can you remember those two W's tonight? You think about that. In your hour of great discouragement, think of those two words. Wait on the Lord and the Word of God. Live by faith. That's how we got to live, don't we? Live by faith. Take heart. Wait on the Lord and be of good courage and He shall strengthen thine heart. Psalm 27 and 14. Purpose number four. To teach us the need to grasp the opportunity. Verses 7 through 10. It's been three days now since Jesus received the word. He knew the time was ready to go. Disciples got very upset. They knew that trouble was brewing in in Jerusalem or he tried to kill him Jesus knew that knew the religious leaders were after him Jesus Jesus gives a very forceful answer what was it here verse 9 are there not 12 hours in the day if any man walk in the day he stumbleth not because he seeth the light of this world we must go and do the Father's work while it's still day you know several weeks ago I got to visit a person and guess what met me at the door he was big he was a big dog and the dear man said uh, listen, uh, you don't need to come through here. Uh, He's a real loving pup. I said, sure he is. He's a real loving pup. Uh, He said, just come around to the back porch, you know. So uh, I took that opportunity. I didn't go through the door. I went around the back side. But uh, we had a, a good meeting there. We have to go sometimes, don't we? Jesus said he was going in the midst of the great trial ahead. He knew what he was facing. We need to do what is right lest the day passes and the opportunity be lost. Jesus would not walk in darkness. You know why, don't you? There's no darkness in him. He went to teach his disciples and to teach us to grasp the opportunity While it is day, day, the night comes when no man can work. means it's passed away. You don't need to be stumbling about in the dark, the foolish things of this world. Get on with the business of his gospel. Brother Paul said something wonderful in Romans chapter 13. Knowing the time, that now it's high time to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. The night is far spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. And let us put on the armor of light. Romans 13. 11. 12. What are we doing as Christians? As the church. We cast in all foolishness and taking on the wisdom of God. We cast off business and put on the business of Christ. We cast off pride and put on the Lord's humility. I like the story told about Harry Truman. Harry was dying. You remember he was the former president. And uh, they said he was dying and his friend uh, Stan was there. And uh, people kept coming by and said, oh, we're going to miss you, Harry. You've been such a great great president we miss your great wisdom and all like that and Stan looked at him and said now Mr. President you and I know that ain't so I guess that busted uh, Harry's bubble with his filled him with pride huh 
It's kind of humbled experience. I guess we need people like that. But in this walk of life, in the ministry of the gospel, we need the humility of Christ. And this mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus, Philippians chapter 2. We, we must put away the pride of self and put on the humility of Christ. What about the darkness of unbelief and the light of belief? The darkness of fear and the light of courage. Jesus would do that. Not only for Lazarus, Mary and Martha, but for you and me. Jesus said in John chapter 12 and 35, Yet a little while while there's light with you. Walk while you have the light. Lest darkness come upon you. Fifth purpose tonight about Lazarus' death was to show Jesus great power over death. The great power over death in verses 11 through 14. Jesus plainly stated that he was going to awaken Lazarus out of sleep. Now, the disciples misunderstood. They thought Lazarus was just resting. You know, if I told you, Steve's at home sleeping. Well, what would you think? He's at home resting. See? In verse 13, 14, Jesus said, "Uh uh-uh, Lazarus is dead. Now, several truths here Jesus is trying to show us. He loved Lazarus, as we said. He loved him as a friend. He loves every believer, as we said. You know, it's good to be a friend of Jesus. What's the opposite of being a friend of Jesus? What's the opposite? Being an enemy. We don't want that. You don't want that. It's good to be a friend of all believers. We have true fellowship. We spoke about the fellowship in heaven one day. Another thing is, he predicted he would raise Lazarus later from the dead, awaken him. That's a picture of the resurrection. But the disciples misunderstood. It says in Matthew 9, 24, that Jairus' daughter was asleep. Stephen martyred, said he had fallen asleep, Acts 7, 60. Some of the 500 witnessed to Jesus' ascension. After the ascension, it says, Paul says, they have fallen asleep, 1 Corinthians 15 and 6. Believers already in heaven are said to be asleep in Jesus, 1 Thessalonians 4 and 13. Now, death is called sleep to picture the idea that the believer is resting in the presence of God. Resting from his labor of service. Resting and refreshing for greater service for God. Now many in the world believe that death is annihilation. It just, you cease, ex- stop existing. That's not what the Bible says. Believers continue to exist. A soul rests in life in the presence of God. As a Christian, you're absent from the body. Present with the Lord. 2 Corinthians 5 and 8. Jesus said, you get up, and you're going out of here. The body lays down, the body sleeps, the body rests, but not the soul. The unbelievers, those who are unsaved, lost, there's no rest. They go to torment, darkness, fire. We know that as hell. Think tonight about the glories of Jesus. The purpose of Lazarus' death to show us how he could teach us more of looking to him and trusting him as our very own Savior, Lord. Are you here tonight and need Jesus? As we said today, there are two places that we're going. One or the other. Heaven, hell. We don't like to talk about hell. I don't like to push it down people's throat. But away from Jesus, outside of Jesus, means we're lost, we're unsaved, separated from the Holy God. But you can come. How do you come? You come by the way of the cross to Jesus. 
Wouldn't you like to know that tonight? The one who died, buried, third day rose again and lives. He loves you. Just like he loved Lazarus and the family. Loved his disciples. He loves us tonight. Would you turn to him? Maybe you're here tonight and need to come into his church. Be a beautiful thing. Be a part of his church family. And maybe here tonight, you just need to seek the Lord and ask him as a Christian, what do I need to do to follow Jesus in a greater way? Let's stand together, for the day will come lead us.